are about to learn one of the most powerful trading strategies in the entire market. And yes, I'm talking about the Wyckoff trading method. Most of you have probably heard something of the sort. In today's video, we're gonna dive into what it is and how you can utilize this to make more money in the markets. But before we get into it, please guys, if you like this type of content, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. It really helps out our channel. Without further ado, let's dive right in. So what you're looking at here is the PLTR chart. Before we go ahead and mark up this chart and dive into the Wyckoff market model, let's actually talk about it. Let's define it. Let's go through the intricacies of it, at least from a beginner standpoint. The Wyckoff trading method is based on the principles of supply and demand, market cycles, and the psychology of market participants. It was developed by Richard Wyckoff in the early 20th century. So yes, this is over 100 year old strategy. This method focuses on understanding the behavior of smart money investors and then utilizing it to our advantage. So really quick, I'll draw out this process and then we're actually gonna look at some of the uh, some of the characteristics. We're gonna dive into some of the data and then we're actually gonna mark up charts. But just to show you a quick summary of it, we're looking for a potential accumulation phase, a potential markup phase, potential distribution phase, and then a markdown phase, followed by an accumulation, a markup, etc. And over time, these phases should result in uptrends, correct? What we're trying to do is identify these two important spots, the distribution, and the accumulation phases so we can short the markdowns and long the markups. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the data, right? Let's define it, look at the data behind this stuff before we actually utilize it on the charts. Why does this matter? So Wyckoff was a trader. He traded with Charles Dow, right? One of the key components of technical analysis. He, he uh, built the Dow Jones Industrial Transportation Averages over 100 years ago before this type of stuff existed. So these guys were really revolutionaries. You can see them here, uh, born in 1873 and died in 1934. So we're going way, way, way back, right? One of the pioneers of technical analysis, Wyckoff, all right? So he has a five-step approach to the market. Not everything is going to be useful. 100 plus years later, some of the edge has been phased out, but we are going to look at it because we are students to the game. We're students to the market always. We want to learn specifically from the guys that have walked our steps before and have accomplished so much more, right? So first one here, determine the present position and probable future trend of the market. Pretty straightforward. Select stocks in harmony with the trend. Trade with the trend, right? That's one of the main tenets of technical analysis. You should stick to it. Number three, select stocks with a cause that equals or exceeds your minimum objective. And we'll go through these on the chart. Number four, determine the stock's readiness to move. You don't wanna be buying stocks that are not ready to actually break out or break down if we're shorting. Number five, time your commitment with the turn in the stock market index. Timing matters if you're trading. If you're investing, not so much, but as a trader, timing absolutely matters. So this is what you know Richard Wyckoff originally envisioned in his Wyckoff price cycle. You've probably seen this before. It's a very, very simplified version of how he was trading the markets over 100 years ago, but this stuff matters. You can see once again an accumulation area, you can see the markup, you can see the distribution area, and then the markdown. It's very easy once we're looking at a simplified version. And as a matter of fact, I think it's very easy from a chart when we pull up some of the examples that we've actually traded inside of the trading initiative. It is easy to understand where we are within this broad market cycle. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that the trades are always gonna go our way though, right? So very important to understand that even though we have an edge in the market utilizing this price cycle theory based off of Wyckoff, it's not bulletproof. So really quick, three Wyckoff laws, the law of supply and demand, right? That determines price direction always. If demand exceeds supply, price is gonna go up. If supply um, exceeds demand, price is gonna come down. Principle, uh, central to Wyckoff's method of trading and investing. Everything is based around supply and demand. Specifically, you know, if you're a technical trader, that's realistically the only thing that matters. As a matter of fact, it's just as price going up or is price coming down? Where is supply and demand and potentially where is equilibrium, right? So the next thing, the law of cause and effect helps the traders and investors set price objectives by gauging potential extent of trends emerging from a trading range. Now we utilize a little bit differently inside of TTI. And like I said, over the course of hundred years, some edges have been taken out of the market. We utilize Fibonacci extensions because there's math baked into it, but we need to have a general idea of how far these things could potentially run and 
when we should cut these trades if they're not working. You might know them as profit targets and stop losses. The last thing here, the law of effort versus result provides an early warning of a possible trend change in the near future. He was looking at divergences between volume and price that can potentially signal the end of a trend. We utilize something a little differently inside of TTI, but most experienced traders are going to have something within their system that says, listen, this trade is done. I want to get out right now. All right, so we've set the stage here for the Wyckoff market model. Once again, here's the very basic price cycle. I wanna take it one step further really quick. You understand kind of what he's trying to do. You wanna buy at the low and sell at the high, short at the high and cover at the low, right? Everybody wants to do that. But Wyckoff built a model that allows us to identify the best chances, the best times to be doing that. If you don't know who Charles Bukowski is, <laughs> he is the grandfather of technical analysis, the patternsite.com. Highly suggest checking it out. It's one of the best, if not the best free resources on technical trading ever made. All right. This guy took Stan Weinstein's version of the Wyckoff market model. If you are privy to Stan Weinstein, he took the Wyckoff market model you can see right here and added some tweaks to it. He uses it on the weekly chart. He uses a 30, day, 30 week moving average on top of it but the stages look awfully similar to the Wyckoff market cycle on purpose. They both are looking to capture the same sorts of moves. Stan Weinstein's just a little bit more updated, right? He came out in the 80s with this idea, expanding off of Wyckoff's work back in the, uh, you know, the 1920s, et cetera. So what I want to show you in particular is Bukowski is really famous for quantifying technical data. And realistically, if you're a technical trader, you need data in front of you to prove that you have edge. Well, if we look at this really quick, the four stages results, essentially what he was trying to do is quantify which stage you buy and which stage you sell. And over time, how much money are you generally going to make, right? So if we look at this one more time, stage one would be the accumulation phase in the Wyckoff market model. Stage two is the markup. Stage three is the distribution. Stage four is the markdown, right? Horizontal channel, uptrend, horizontal channel, downtrend. These are very easy to understand once you realize what you're looking for. What Bukowski did was quantify all of the different trades. And he says, listen, if you were to buy in the first stage and then sell in the first stage, which is the accumulation phase within the Wyckoff market model or stage one within this Stan Weinstein's version, you on average would lose 1.7%. That doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, right? Why would you be buying and selling within the same horizontal channel if you're a breakout style trader? Now, what happens if you would, were to buy the stage one and sell the stage two? Well, really quick, it looks like you'd make the most amount of money on that trade, 25.9% on average makes sense you're buying the horizontal level breakout and you're selling in the uptrend now one thing that's super important to understand is if you buy in stage one and sell in stage three you actually statistically will underperform uh instead of selling in stage two and sometimes you know that's confusing wouldn't you want to sell in towards the distribution phase so if you were to buy stage one and sell stage three wouldn't it make sense that that would make the most amount of money. Well, realistically, what we see and what we've seen inside of TTI time and time again is that by the time stage three comes around, people don't actually know it's stage three yet until we start either a prolonged horizontal channel or we start to break down. And therefore the profitability that we had on the stage two incline starts to get whittled away. It's not necessarily a bad thing to sell in stage three. It's just maximum profitability comes in stage two, but that obviously has some risks as well because what happens if you sell right here before the stage two incline is done, right? So this is not necessarily cherry picked, but this shows the extremes. So if you were to time a buy one stage and sell the stage two at the Pico top, you'd make the most amount of money, but most traders are probably going to be at the buy one and sell three. And here Bukowski goes and shows the example, the stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four market cycle very quickly on this Boeing trade. So what I wanna do here, you have this general idea, right? You have this idea that the Wyckoff market model and the Stan Weinstein's fix on this, what we're trying to do, right, is we're trying to identify the accumulation and the distribution phases. So the accumulation occurs where smart money investors, you know, they're gradually buying assets at lower prices. It continues to set a floor, a support level. Let's actually flip over to TradingView and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Um, we look at TradingView here and you can see, if we get rid of uh, these paintbrush tools really quick, you can see that PLTR starts to place this support level, right? This, this horizontal channel. For whatever reason, the market doesn't really want PLTR to get below six or seven dollars. And we can realistically assume it's because smart money investors are buying at those levels and creating support there, right? They're gradually accumulating shares, a larger and larger position. So when the buying pressure actually increases enough to overcome the overhead resistance, what do you think happens? The breakout happens, 
right? The breakout occurs from the accumulation phase, and this is what we're trying to trade. When we can identify the horizontal channel, specifically over the course of about a year, and then we get the high volume breakout here, we can expect a meteoric run to the upside, which is what we got in PLTR. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one more time. Let's go through the full stage here. Remember, everything starts with that stage one accumulation. So we need some sort of horizontal channel that essentially signifies smart money coming in and buying these shares. Next, you get the advancing stage, that markup stage, right? That's stage two. This is what we're trying to hold through. We wanna maximize that profitability to get as much of it as we can because this is where all the volume is coming in. This is where all of the bullishness, the demand is greater than supply, etc. Once we start to peak out, which is here, but could have been here as well, depending on your trading style. It's very hard to hold through the entire stage two move. So if you end up selling early on these things, don't kick yourself in the butt. It was still a great trade, right? So we're looking for some sort of horizontal channel, which we got. It was very brief, but we got it. Looks like it was the course about a month. Coincides, by the way, with the beginning of the bear market in tech. And then we get the prolonged drawdown. This is the markdown phase, right? This is that stage four or stage four markdown rather the downtrend this is your bear market so if you were able to short the pltr somewhere up here and hold it i really doubt anybody could but in a perfect world you could have made a bunch of money on the, re the the retreat from the highs right but what we're trying to do is we're coming out of a bear market is we're trying to identify the stocks that all of a sudden entered into this prolonged accumulation phase like we said where demand is greater than supply it's propping it up it's not allowing pltr to drop below that seven or six dollar level once we can identify that we could very easily pick a breakout spot, which we did. We bought PLTR here. I mean, it's clear as day. This was the overhead resistance. We wanted to buy that. It was on high volume, and we did. You can look at the video right now. This is some of the profits that we had on PLTR. As a matter of fact, as I'm making this video, we still have positions in PLTR. They're free. There's no reason to sell these things. We can continue to see profits come in at PLTR. Continues in the uptrend, which we expected to do. These stage two breakouts don't just go parabolic, hit their stage three, and then all of a sudden consolidate and break down. This, these take time, right? Specifically, we're coming out of a bear market right now. So the market is starting to push back up. It's gonna take some, some time. Uh, nothing is a straight line up, but this PLTR trade was, was huge for us. And it was directly because of this Wyckoff market model. So what we can expect here after the stage two, no idea where it's gonna eventually peak out. Just zero idea. But let's say we hit a new all time high over time. We would expect that we enter some sort of horizontal channel up here and then we would get what the markdown it's important to understand though that the next accumulation phase should realistically be higher than the previous one because that's how uptrends work right each accumulation phase and each distribution phase should be higher than the previous one in uptrends that's how you get that stair that staircase uh type of action so we've also traded you know other names it's not just uh, pltr that we've traded this concept out of you can see cflt cflt ironically uh, is another software related name. Get the accumulation, the markup, the distribution, the markdown, and then the prolonged accumulation once again. What did we do? We bought the breakout. This was a fruitful trade for us as well. You can go ahead and look at the screen right now. This is a very simplified version of the Wyckoff market model, but it's an incredibly important concept to understand that the market tends to move in these business cycles, right? These market cycles, we can understand them and identify them. You can build a scanner to identify this specific setup right here. You don't need to scan through manually thousands of stocks to find these types of things. You can build your own scanner and it's incredibly important. So inside of TTI, on top of these stage one accumulation phases that we like to buy the breakouts of, we also wanna see an accompanying 200 day moving average on the daily time frame. We want price to be above the 200 day moving average to really solidify the fact that we are breaking out of a potential stage one. We want an accommodative, um, we want an accommodative 200 day moving average. There's a lot of these out there. You can see CCL We're currently trading this stage one. I mean, you can see it clear as day. You got the break or you got the uh, distribution phase up here. Markdown, accumulation phase, markup, right? It's the same exact setup time and time again that we are going through. The hardest part on this in my mind is being able to discern when the stage two and stage four uptrends and downtrends, right? Your stage three downtrend, excuse me, your stage four downtrend and your stage two uptrend, these are incredibly hard to know when they're done. That's when experience comes in. That's when we were just talking about uh, having something within your system that will allow you to 
uh, really go and, and figure out when momentum is stalling. We use the RSI for us. But realistically, guys, the Wyckoff market model, I have to tell you, is one of, if not the most incredible pieces of technical analysis that you can understand. It's not going to dictate everything that you do in the market. Like I said, the edge is not 100% like it was 100 years ago. But having the general idea of where these powerful breakouts can potentially be will absolutely allow you to make more money in the market over time. So now that you have a basic understanding of the Wyckoff market model, it's time to put it into practice. Find these charts that are breaking out of this stage one accumulation right now. There are a lot of them. We've been trading them since late January of 2023 when everybody was bearish in the market, right? When you find this type of setup and it's hitting across the board, you need to press the gas pedal down on it because eventually there will be no more stage one breakouts. Everything will be in stage two. So patience is key when applying this method. Don't jump the gun, have some sort of entry mechanism on the chart and then go and find these things, all right? Remember, mastering this approach is gonna take time and dedication. You're gonna have to study for this type of stuff, understand how price moves off of these breakout areas, but I guarantee you with patience and discipline, you're gonna find your way to be a more successful trader utilizing the Wyckoff market model. Guys, if you like this type of content, once again, please like, subscribe, it really helps out the channel and if you are a busy trader, I'm talking busy full-time trader, you don't have time to day trade, you're a young professional, you're an old professional, you own your own company, etc., and you do not have a small account, we will help you bring in $10,000 or more swing trading utilizing the TTI swing trading system. Our community is based around helping guys with nine to fives make money in the market without giving up other time requirements, right? Other things like family time or having to hide from your boss in the bathroom to trade market open. We don't do that. So if you're interested, link is below and I'll catch you in the next video.